Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, we're joined by Dr. Katerina Kiel. Katerina got her bachelor's degree in chemistry from Saginaw Valley State University in 2016 before coming to Michigan State University to complete her doctoral work. While at MSU, she worked in the Tepe group and investigated methods of heterocycle synthesis and completed a total synthesis that she'll be sharing with us today. Currently, she's a research scientist in the RNA Therapeutics Division of Eli Lilly and Company. And with that, I'll hand it over to you, Katerina. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Matt, for that kind introduction. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in to this episode of Synthesis Workshop. Today, I'm going to discuss one of the projects I completed during my PhD education, namely the first total synthesis of nortopsentin D. So let's begin with a brief introduction on nortopsentin D. Nortopsentin D is a bisindole alkaloid, which was originally isolated in 1996 from the axonelid sponge Dragmacidin SP. At the time of its isolation, nortopsentin D was tested for its cytotoxicity against KB tumor cells, as well as its antibacterial activity and antifungal activity, but it proved inactive for all three. Interestingly, however, a completely methylated derivative of nortopsentin D which I've shown on this slide, was found to have high cytotoxicity with an EC50 of roughly 18 nanomolar. Nortopsentin D is also very structurally unique when compared to the rest of the nortopsentin family, which is mainly comprised of bisindole alkaloids with an imidazole linker. Nortopsentin D is instead composed of a central complex tri-substituted imidazole for own with a 6 bromyl indole at the C2 position and a 2-amino 4-methyl imidazole and 6 bromo indole at C5. Nortopsentin D is one of several known 5,5-disubstituted imidazole for own containing natural products. Of the products highlighted on this slide, only four have been previously synthesized through very substrate-specific linear paths. At this point, it was very evident that there was a lack of robust convergent strategies for the formation of imidazole 4 ones specifically their complex tertiary carbon, that can then be applied to the synthesis of these natural products. With that in mind, I came up with a highly convergent retrosynthetic strategy. In this plan, the first step involved the protection of most free amines found on nortopsentin D including both indoles and the 2 amino midazole, which I protected using a pyridimal protecting group. This was done to improve the intermediate solubility in a range of organic solvents and for ease of purification. After protection, I proposed the central ring be divided into two key fragments, one being a dione, which I've shown here in blue, and the other being an amidine, shown in red. From there, the dione was broken into two more fragments, one being an indole 3 ethine and the other being an aryl iodide. For the other fragment, the amidine, I started from a 6 bromo indole. Based on this retrosynthesis, the key step of this pathway involves the condensation of novel dione and amidine intermediates, followed by a subsequent rearrangement to produce the core imidazole foron ring. This is based on a known reaction for the formation of 5,5 disubstituted imidazole forones. To further explain how this reaction occurs, I have provided a proposed mechanism based on previous reports highlighting the cyclization method, of which the references are provided below. In this mechanism, the first couple steps involve the condensation of dione and amidine fragments to form a diimino intermediate. Once formed, the imine cyclizes upon the ketone carbon to form an imidazole. Then, a pinnacle-like rearrangement will occur to produce the 5,5 disubstituted center while reforming a ketone observed at C4. Lastly, protonation will lead to the desired final product. So to begin this synthesis, I started by making the two key fragments. Here on this slide, you'll see how I synthesized the amidine. To synthesize this fragment, I followed a synthetic pathway that has been previously reported for the total synthesis of nortopsentin B and synthetic analog D, as referenced below. Starting with 6 bromoindole, I back protected the nitrogen using Bach and hydride under basic conditions. 
Once the nitrogen was protected, I functionalized the three position of the indole, followed by a basic aqueous workup using potassium hydroxide, which provided the desired amide and 58% yield. The amide was then converted to a thioamide using a Lawson's reagent, and then the thioamide was converted to an amino methylthiol using methyl iodide. These two steps both provided the desired products an 89% yield. Lastly, the methyl thiol was substituted for an amine upon the addition of ammonium chloride and heat. Overall, I was able to synthesize the desired amidine in five steps with an overall yield of 30%. Next, I focused on synthesizing the dione, of which I had to start by synthesizing the two necessary heterocyclic rings that compose that dione, namely intermediates 5 and 6. To make intermediate 5, I started with 6 bromoindole. I then functionalized the 3 position with an iodide and tosylated the nitrogen using tosyl chloride under basic conditions. Once the iodine was in place, I used a Sanagashira coupling reaction to couple indole and trimethylsiloethine. This was then followed by a protodesylation to produce the desired terminal alkyne intermediate 5 in two steps in excellent yields. On the other hand, I made aryl iodide 6 by first cyclizing 2 chloroacetone and 2 amino pyrimidine together to produce my protected imidazole and 58% yield. I then iodinated the imidazole using N iodo 6 cinnamon. Once complete, I was able to couple together intermediates 5 and 6 through a Sanagashira coupling reaction to produce my desired internal alkyne in 85% yield. The last step to form the desired dione intermediate was then the oxidation of internal alkyne to dione. A range of different oxidation methods were attempted, however, what I found was that this oxidation proved to be more difficult than I expected, as the starting material and product are both unstable under harsh oxidative conditions and high temperatures. Of the attempted conditions, many led to low yields or a variety of other complications, including decomposition of the starting material, loss of the tosyl protecting group, and in some cases, oxidation of the 3 methyl of the imidazole pyrimidine. Thankfully, the limitations of high temperature and harsh oxidative conditions were successfully overcome by the use of mercuric nitrate monohydrate as an oxidation source. Now that both key fragments had been synthesized, the formation of the core midazole for own was performed. Following standard conditions, the amidine and dione were reacted under basic conditions, using excess sodium hydroxide and refluxing in ethanol over the period of three hours. This procedure provided 19% yield of the desired imidazole for own product, where both the n bac and n tosyl protecting groups were deprotected during the reaction. One observation that was made during this reaction was that the main side product was a detosylated dione, which remained uncondensed with the amidine, even upon heating over an extended period of time. Based on this observation, I devised a theory, and that theory was that, perhaps, the presence of the indole's n tosyl and correlatively the added electrophilicity of having the and tosyl present may actually be necessary for the condensation of the dione's ketone with the amidine's nitrogen. To test this theory, I decided to try the reaction again using a weaker, less nucleophilic base, aka potassium bicarb, and a less nucleophilic solvent using isopropyl alcohol to avoid n tosyl deprotection. When this reaction was performed, it was refluxed for 24 hours, and I isolated 29% yield of my desired cyclized product, where in fact the indole's end tosyl did remain intact. This was really exciting, and it supported my theory, but curiously, it actually led me to another observation. And that observation was that, in both of the previous reactions I had run, it appeared that the only cyclized product formed had already lost the amidine's n bach protecting group. This observation prompted a new theory regarding the nucleophilic nature of the amidine. 
That theory was that perhaps the Enbach deprotection of the indole must occur before the amidine will condense with the diode. So to test this theory, Enbach deprotection of the amidine was performed using trifluoroacetic acid. After refluxing for 16 hours, the volatiles were removed and the reaction was basified in isopropyl alcohol using an excess of potassium bicarb and a minimal amount of sodium hydroxide. Once enough base was added to bring the reaction to a pH of roughly 8, the diode was then introduced to the reaction and it was heated until cyclization was complete as monitored by TLC. Once it was complete, it appeared that there was a mixture of both the tosylated and detosylated cyclized product. So to simplify the isolation of N detosylation was performed in the same pot through the addition of excess sodium hydroxide and heat. Overall, this modified procedure produced 52% yield of the desired imidazolforum product. To summarize this slide and highlight the overall optimization process, we determined that the condensation of amidine and diome appears to be very susceptible to changes in electron densities and can be manipulated to improve the conversion to product. This is very important to recognize if we intend to potentially use the cyclization technique on more complex electron dense starting materials, many of which would be seen in the total synthesis of natural products that I've highlighted previously in this presentation. To finish up the synthetic pathway, the 3 methyl imidazole pyrimidine was deprotected using hydrazine monohydrate, which afforded the tidal compound nortopsentin D and 70% yield. The structure of nortopsentin D was confirmed through NMR spectroscopy as well as X ray crystallography, where we were able to determine the crystal structure of cyclized product 17. Overall, and in conclusion, the first total synthesis of nortopsentin D was accomplished through a highly convergent path, including only seven linear steps with an overall yield of 1.6%. The synthetic pathway represents a method of cyclization never before used for total synthesis, which can be envisioned for the use of multiple other 5,5 disubstituted imidazole 4 ohm containing natural product total synthesis. With that, I'd like to thank you all again for your attention, as well as thank my advisor, Dr. Yatsatepe, my lab mates, Dr. Richard Staples for his help in determining the crystal structure, and lastly, funding through the National Institute of Health. Thank you for tuning in for this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Katerina for a great talk. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.